Hey guys, welcome back to Blind Strike Exotics. I'm John. Today we're gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna sort of start like a, a vlog series where I'm showing you just what I do on a daily basis. Um, let me know if you guys like this sort of video and if you want me to do more of them. You know, a lot of the other stuff I've been doing is me been sitting in front of the desk and showing you snakes and telling you information. Um, this is just gonna be more just kind of like me, what I do every day here. Um, so today, you know, it's the start of the week, so we are gonna be getting all of the males paired up with the females to start the week off. And we're also gonna start feeding my grow outs of my hashling, so I'll show you guys that as well. So let's dive in and please remember to like and subscribe. All right, so basically what I do is, you know, the males uh, are over here and I have a couple up top up here. Um, basically what I do is I just pull the male out and put him in with the appropriate female here. I try to start off on the same side. Um, usually the way I have it is my, I think my most important females are mostly on this side. I think my uh, het clown females up there, so I'll start my clown male up on that side. But like uh, my ultra pin females there, um, my Lucy's are over on this side. Um, so I try to keep like the important females on one side and start the males here and then you know every day move them down that way a, a notch. So here's Big Puma and he's ready to come out. He's either always ready to eat or ready to come out and get back with his uh, with his girlfriends. And he is a big big boy. He quickly he grew fast. I think he's probably my biggest male at this point because he's actually still eating. Uh, in the breeding season and he's gonna be jumping in here with my one of my super inch EOD females who is sitting here on the cool side and she's uh, her belly's sort of turned up to the side which is a good sign that maybe she's starting to ovulate so we'll put him in there we'll leave them alone next we got Danky King here who was sh oh, good he shed he was in shed last week and he did not pair up with anybody um so he actually did shed so that is good there he is fresh from a shed again he's a, a banana super inchy fire um and as you can see none of those banana freckles come out on him um with a super inchy fire in there so if you're looking for a banana a yellow snake but you don't want the freckles try to get one that's super inchy and fire um, and I've been starting him off with Annie because they seem to pair up well every time. She is also seeking the cool end of the cage, which is also a very good sign. She actually just shed um, maybe about a week ago. I'm hoping that was like her pre-ovulation shed. Oh, the other thing I do is I take their cards off. So like Danky King's card, and I'll put him here with Annie. Um, Big Puma's card. I put him here with my Super Inch OD too, just so I know where they're at. Uh, next we'll get Shredder. He's up here. He's he's one of the snakes who still likes his tiny little hides. <laughs> you know, even though he's a big over a thousand gram male. Um, he still likes his hides. And I usually start him off with Baby Butter, who is my, he's my Super Mojave Banana, and she's my Super Pastel Super Butter. And she has either been sitting in her bowl or hugging it for probably two weeks now, so that's a really good sign as well. Um, she is pretty, getting pretty thick too. And it, like you can kind of see um, how her body's not real straight. It's very kind of wavy. That's a good sign that she's starting to ovulate as well. So there is my Lucy's. Move his card over. Next we have Black Mask, who's my Black Pastel uh, Mojave GHI. Not Black Pastel, he's a Cinnamon GHI Mojave. I always get that mixed up. Um, now he has been if you've been watching my videos, my, my favorite ones was, was 
Sterless here, my Sterling Lesser. They have been pairing up beautifully every week. So I usually start him off with her to make sure they get the most amount of time together. Um, Cause he's real, that's really the best pairing I have for him. She has been sitting here for probably two weeks and she, I've found her completely turned upside down, which is usually a fantastic sign for ovulating. Um, so hopefully uh, she may be, hopefully laying eggs here pretty soon. So I'll take his card and put that there. Now next we have Tesla, who's my purple passion blackhead leopard male. Um, he started off the season very slow. He wasn't pairing up with anybody. He was just kind of sitting in there and staring at the females. Um, but he decided that he wanted to start locking up with Princess here, who is my biggest female, if you've seen my biggest video. And as you can see, she is laying sort of upside down on her side as well, which is, again, a fantastic sign. Look at the size difference here, though. <laughs> He's about a thousand grams, and she's over four thousand. Um, you know, she could she could devour him if she wanted to, but um, he uh, he's locking up with her. So look how dark his head is. He's so cool. And so hopefully, now I have not seen him lock up with either one of the other two females he was paired with. So I'm hoping that now that he's getting a little bit of practice in with Princess, that it kind of starts going a little better with him. To put his tag and the last male in this rack is my ultra male bamboo poe um and i have been starting him off with my ultra pin female and they have been and i i if you want to look at a card here real quick you know i have the month i have the weeks of the month the checks are when i visibly see that they're uh, locked up and the x's are when i don't if I can't confirm they're locked up, I just put an X. Um, you know, these couple weeks here, I think she was shedding the, the last two weeks of this month. And obviously, I'm on the fourth week of January right now. So I've seen them visually have four lockups. It could have happened more than that, but I haven't seen it. Um, but she's, again, here on the cold side of the of the tub, which is, again, a fantastic sign. And, you know, some of these times where they've been locked up, it's been, you know days at a time as well so it's not even like it's been you know, one day here or there so it's always a fantastic sign move his card over and then over here my last two males uh joker who's my leopard clown and get him out of there i think he just shed this week too so and he's going, I usually put him in with the Pastel Lesser Clown, or Het Clown, who I just featured in my recessive video. Um, they've locked up three or four times, um, you know, more recently in the last couple weeks, so that's a good sign. Um, I have him locked up with my Pinstripe Enchias, too. They've only had a couple locks, but he hasn't locked up with my Super Enchi Ghost. So I think I'm actually gonna move the super inchy ghost uh over to my big puma um because he seems to be doing a fantastic job of locking up all of his snakes so i want to make sure um i get something out of that combo so i think that's where he's going is with that girl um and my last male is my ivory leopard male who without fail every single week is locking up with my ivory possible ng female um so he uh and he's been locking up with her consistently and frequently no she's one of my smaller females but i'm hoping that something good comes out of this um if i could hit i mean everything out of this combo is going to be ivory but hopefully i hit some ivory leopard enchies and He's super happy about that. So I gotta move his tag over. And so that's it. Um, I check them. I will check them usually by the late afternoon, early evening, to see if there's any locks. I'll check again right before I go to bed to see if there's any locks. And then tomorrow when I get up and come back down, um, if any of them are locked up, I leave them in there. I try not to disturb them um, until I see that they're not locked up anymore. 
if uh, they're not locked up at that point, I just take them out and move them to the next tub. Um, let's say he's he's done for the day with baby butter. I'll take his tag, move it down to the next one, take him out, put him over there. Um, you know, I'll mark a check here if they locked up or not. And then, you know, we just go down the line. So the next thing we're gonna do now is feed all the hatchlings I have and the grow outs and there's a bunch of grow outs in there too. So that is what we're doing next. All right, so the first thing I do is I have these orange buckets. I have one for basically everything. Um, I have one for clean water. I have one for dirty water. I have one to thaw out the rats. And I also use one to weigh my snakes on the scale. Um, so what I do is I just get this water as hot as possible. And while that's getting hot, I will go into my chest freezer here and see what I have left. I'm running out of really, really tiny rats, which I think is okay because I think most of my hatchlings are ready to move up in size to bigger prey. Um, now this water's hot, so I put the hose in and I get it coming out real hot and I start dumping in rats. Um, so typically, I know um, all of my hatchlings pretty much eat every day. Um, some of my grow outs don't eat consistently every week. So uh, what I try to do is, you know, I don't want to waste rats. And if you put, if you have 10 snakes and you thaw 10 rats and only eight of them eat, then you wasted two rats that week. So what I typically do is I put in less rats then i have snakes so that i can see who wants to eat and who doesn't want to eat um so you know i get i get all my frozen stuff from rodent pro um i have shopped around the best i could and they seem to be the most reliable source for rats to have in stock and also um seem to have the best price so um i think the small rats come in bags of 20 typically, um, which is just a big old hunk of rat meat right here. Um, so I toss, I probably have maybe 10 in there right now. Um, I'll let them sit in here for probably a half an hour. Um, once they're completely thawed out, I, I usually don't dry them off. I usually just take them and put them directly into their tubs. Most of the snakes take them immediately. Some of them are kind of too shy and they um, just kind of wait until you're gone, until it's quiet and they eat. I have a couple that only still eat live and they don't even eat during the day. I have to feed them at night before I go to bed. So um, I'm gonna let these thaw out and then once they're thawed, I will start showing you guys how I feed them. Uh, you know, depending on what day of the week it is, we also are feeding Dingo here. Um, he always, he's usually always hiding. He likes to hide back behind his hide, which I don't understand. But um, <clears throat> so it's uh, it's a day to feed him too. So you know, I basically just put his food in his food bowl there. Um, if you're wondering what this is, it's it's wet dog food, um, which is actually highly recommended by a lot of blue tongue skink breed breeders as a balanced diet. Um, every couple days you dust it with vitamins and, and calcium um, but uh, you know he'll come out here shortly and start eating so hopefully maybe if I pull him out maybe he'll come out and start eating for us come here buddy he was just shedding this week too come on buddy want to come out and eat come on bud come here dingo hey buddy Ooh. look here do you want to eat? Say hi. Maddie loves dingo. <laughs> no, he's going to be shy today. He's not going to eat. <laughs> Say, come here. Say, come here and eat, dingo. Oh, he scared him. All right, he'll come out later and eat on his own. So we'll leave him go. Oh, so cute, Daddy. He's so cute, huh? Daddy, he my eyes. Oh, that's so bright in your eyes, huh? All right, so he will... Uh, 
he'll come out and eat on his own later. Hopefully by the time I'm done shooting this video, he, he comes out so I can show you guys. All right, now they're all thawed out and I just usually drain out most of the water just so there's enough warm, uh, enough water in there to keep them warm. Um, and I'm doing this with one hand, so please bear with me. Um, so, you know, I just kind of run through the rack, whoever needs food for the day. Um, and we'll start down here with my, one of my newest girls. Let's see here. She's already poking her little, her little nose out. Um, so basically all my grow outs are pretty much eating, uh, frozen thawed small rats at this point. Um, so let's see. I don't, she ate, I think the first time. I, oh, there you go. Quick strike. Now I've had this snake for a couple weeks. Um, and she's already eaten, you know, right off the tongs, frozen thawed. I do not dry off my rats. I know some people, um, you know, say that, but you know, it, I've never found it to be necessary. Um, you know, you may have a, a picky snake that only wants the stuff that's dried out. Um, but I, you know, I have brand new snakes. I have old snakes and they take them just fine. Just come wet right out of the bucket. Um, this girl, she will sometimes take it, sometimes not. And what I'll do is I'll just leave it there. Um, she'll come pick it up later if she wants it. Um, my two super gravel girls uh, refuse to eat frozen thawed. Um, so I feed them live and they're really weird. They like to eat at night. Um, it's not super weird because technically they'd be hunting at night, but everybody else eats in the middle of the day. So, um, these two all feed live and I feed them at night. Um, with these ones, you know, I move the pins back and forth so I know which week it is. Um, you know, this was last week. So once I see that she downs it, it could slid over, but I put them in the middle to let me know that there is a rat in there. They were just fed or there's a rat sitting in there and I'm waiting for them to eat. Um, and then once they finally eat, I'll switch it over. Um, and then we have my couple hatchlings that I have in here. <clears throat> let's do, let's see, this is my lemon blast leopard pie. And as you can see, He's ready for something. So these guys are eating pretty much fuzzies right now. Crushed it. Next we'll do my freeway female. I'm trying to do this with one hand. I know she's gonna be right at the very edge of the cage. <laughs> As usual. And if I can get her back in there safely, out of the water. Whoop, there we go. She's literally always right at the edge of the tub. Um, whether she's coming out to say hi or to, to eat something. This guy is the uh, leopard phantom pastel highway mail and I'm searching for I had one bigger one in here. Here it is. Found it. Alright. Alright, he's always ready to go. Got it. Crushed it. Hey, what's that? You're feeding the baby to those baby snakes. So cute. So fluffy. So fluffy. Yeah, it's so fluffy. Oh. I like the game one. This is Katana game one. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right, now let's do the Mojave, Pastave, possible leopard pied female. She always eats for me too. She's one baby, sort of has kind of a bad attitude. She's still very defensive when I get her out. But she is a great eater. And the last one here is a Mojave Lesser male I have who is up for sale. Um, he's the last one I have for sale if you want a morph market. So let's see. He's kind of in between frozen thawed. As you can see, he's always waiting at the front of the tub too. He's switching between frozen thawed and live. So I've been trying to get him over to frozen thawed. Um, let's see. Wait. 
go. Boop. In the water bowl. Let's just pick him up and move him out. And look, he's curled up on that nicely. I'll come back. He's always strikes at the frozen thawed um, and curls up on it, but it, a couple times I've seen that he's not actually swallowed it. Um, so I will check to make sure he swallowed it. If he didn't, I'll have to give him a live one. But he's been switching back and forth. Um, I'm hoping he just finally sticks on frozen thawed. Now, these are my my grow outs. This is a Pastave, a little female who usually crushes food for me if she's awake. Sometimes I have to leave hers in there. Let's see. Sometimes if they're sleeping in there, I just kind of... Nope, there it is. She's striking. <laughs> I just knock the rat off the side of the hide and they wake up and see if she wants it. She'll take it. I'll just leave it in there for her. She usually always eats. So I will, I will switch her pin over. This girl is my super pastel calico. I think she's in shed. I, she'll probably still eat because she is usually one of my more ravenous females. Um, let's see. I'll have to take her out of her hide and I'll see if she wants to eat. She may not. Nope. She just keeps curling herself up. So I will just leave her alone this week. And then, you know, if they're in shed and they're not eating, I'll just take the pin off and remove it. Um, just to know that they didn't eat the last week. This is a cinnamon lesser and she's usually pretty shy. She will not eat from the tongs, but she will eat frozen thawed. So I'll just leave her rat in there for her. And I'll move her pin to the middle. And next we have we have my super vanilla pesto calico. And she's usually always ready to go too. There she is. Crushed it. This girl always eats. Shed or not. And she's growing big quick. Move the pin over. Um now these pides are all kind of more recent introductions to my collection. Uh, this girl's in shed, the pin pied. So I'm just gonna dump a rat in there and hopefully she takes it. If not, I'll move it out. So I'll just leave it here by her, by her cave. Uh, this girl, uh, I think she, she eats frozen thawed for me. I can't remember now, actually. I think she does. I got her, she was a little on the small side, I think, a little a little thin, um, but I think she'll, she ate the first week I had her, so I think she'll be good. Let's see. I don't know if that was a defensive or a hungry strike. She looks hungry. She's a little thin. I might actually start trying to feed her two small rats at a time. Yep, she's eating, so that's good. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna move her tag in the middle. And next, this girl just shed. <clears throat> I have no idea if she's gonna eat or not. Um, and I don't know if she's gonna come out of her tub or her hide, so I might just leave this one in here as well. Let's see if I can stimulate any sort of a response from her. She's still kind of cooped up in there. So I'll leave that sit. And I think what I explained to you guys a little earlier was I don't put more food in there in the bucket than I know I'm going to use. <laughs> I think I lied. And I did the wrong thing because I still have one, two, three, four, five, six in here. Um, and I only have two or three more snakes that potentially will be eating the frozen thawed. This girl seems to only like live, but I'll keep it in there just to see. And my last one is my pewter Enchi Heck Ghost. 
who is just an absolute food demon. Um, oops, sorry. So she eats, I got her it's actually as a baby. She's been eating so well that, let's see if I can get her to come out a little bit to eat. Yeah, she, I mean, she's just absolutely crushes at every single meal. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do, um, I have four rats left, so I might just put two in with the super gravels to see if they're gonna eat them. Um, I'm gonna feed my rainbow boa too, so I'll show you that. And I'll see if there's any of the adult females that still wanna take food. Most of them don't want food anymore, but a couple of them will still eat, so I'm gonna try them as well. Um, so I'm gonna dump those in with the super gravels and then I'll show you a quick video of the rainbow boa eating. All right, now Minnie here basically never misses a meal. Um, she's roughly about two years old. I've had her since she was close to a hatchling. Um, but I'm gonna kind of wake her up a bit. I think her head's all the way in the back. But if I can get her going, where's your head at, baby? Come here, I see you. Come here. Come get some food. Woo-wee! <laughs> Look at that. He's angry. Now I need to be careful because she likes to bury herself underneath the um the tub and kind of sneak out the front. So I gotta make sure that she's never bitten me. Um but that doesn't mean she might not do it on accident. And she's on the she nope, she's all the way back here. Her head's all the way back there in the corner. She actually looks she's going in a shed. I thought she just shed recently. Let's see. She's, she's flicking her tongue. You hungry? She had a huge rat recently, so I don't know. Oop, she missed. Let's see if she takes it. I can't really get the camera in there anymore. Close, let me see. Oh, it's tight. No, well, I'll leave it there for her. She usually just takes it from me. Um, I'll leave it right there in the back. Right back there. I was hoping she'd take it, but um, it looks like she's in the shed, actually. So hopefully she grabs it. If not, I'll check back in a couple hours and just take it out. Um, hopefully she does take it, though. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. It was kind of a, a day in the life, you know, Monday morning of me, you know, checking to make sure, uh, you know, the males are in the right tubs and everybody's fed. Um, like I said, the couple snakes that don't take food right away off of me, I just leave them in there for a couple hours and see if they eat them or not. If they don't, I try to switch them to a different snake who I know will eat it. Um, but like I said, I told you guys to not thaw out more food than you know is going to go. I accidentally did that today because I wasn't counting. Um, so I might have four or five rats I might have to toss out, but hopefully that's not the case. So um that's it for today i guess vlog number one um let me know if you guys like this sort of content and i'll start making more of it um i've kind of been on the fence about whether or not i want to show you hey this is what i do every day but some people might enjoy it so let me know if you like this stuff um i'll start making more of it so we'll see you guys next time